Good afternoon, everybody. I'm your host, Crystal, and this is another edition of the 9 O'Clock Meltdown podcast. And over speakerphone hailing from California, I have Bruce Gwen over the phone. Hello, sir. Well, howdy. How you doing there? <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. Uh, now, I interviewed you, oh, geez, probably back in 2010, maybe? What? No, I, I, I haven't aged that much yet, but um, <laughs> I was looking at our records, and I went back, and it was 2000, and I think it was 15, so 15 okay. or 16. Oh, yeah, all, right. all right, so so it's only been a, a few years then. Yeah, well, you, <laughs> added, you added about five years on me, but that's okay. Oh, <laughs> Well, you know, it's it's only been a year since I uh, left the radio station and kind of struck out on this whole podcast venture, but it feels like it's been a lot longer than that. So we'll yeah. we'll see. We'll see, you know. Um, yeah. Yeah, so you still go by the uh, full title of Bruce Gwen and the Big Rain. Yeah, it, that's the band. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, now, look, just to kind of give people a little bit of a recap, how did you get started with uh, the Big Rain? Oh, the band started, uh, well, it started as a duo back in 1994 through about 1996. Uh, my really good friend, one of my best friends, uh, a really good human being, a fellow by the name of Peter Alimo, he and I, I was uh, recording a, a solo album, um, and I ran into Peter at a fitness center. Mm -hmm. and uh, local here around where we live. I was just doing my normal kind of workout routine, and I hear this gentleman talking to a lady, and I hear him say, wow, I really need to find a singer. I got, you know, I, I want to get this my little music thing going, and I, I, my ears perked up, and for some reason I looked over and I said, I'm a singer, how are you? <laughs> and... <laughs> And we started talking, and we just hit it off, and I invited him to the studio to, you know, see what I was doing with my new project. We decided to sing together for about, you know, just give it, let us, let's sing this thing. And he said, oh, cool, I'll, I'll sing harmony, and you, you sing your part. Mm -hmm. We sang for about 30 seconds, we looked at each other and said, wow, this is a keeper, let's, let's do something. So that's how it all started. All right, excellent. And you guys still are creating music? Well, the Peter and I are like best friends. In fact, I spoke with him yesterday to see how he's doing. In 2010 or late 2009, my, he had a, an unusual, he's not really that old of a guy, but he mm -hmm. had an unusual stroke and it affected him. So since mm -hmm. then, I struck out on my own um, in that regard mm -hmm. and uh, continued writing and producing albums and uh kept the band going but I said to him you know Pete I really can't call it Big Rain anymore because you're not in the band and Big Rain was you and so he said well Bruce just put your name on front of it and keep me in the keep me from memory and I said okay you're good with that I'll go ahead with that mm -hmm. and so uh, I continued on and, but uh, we, we we talk quite you know pretty often mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good, good, excellent, excellent. And now, Bruce, how did you get started on your musical endeavor? Was it you, you picked up a guitar at 16 and taught yourself how to sing, or did you go to music school? It actually started for me when I was about six years old, actually. Mm -hmm. And my, my mom had some old uh, albums of Billie Holiday, the singer. The okay. Great, great, yeah, the great Billie Holiday. I happened to be, you know, be around the house, of course, and I heard this amazing artist singing, and it just, I don't know how to explain it, but whenever I hear her voice sing, it just does something to me that I can't explain, and I actually went back and kind of traced, well, where did all this stuff sort of come from myself, because people had asked me that question, I said, yeah, I, I really should think about it, mm -hmm. and it, it took me all the way back to six, five or six years old when I heard Billie Holiday sing for the first time. Mm -hmm. And after I heard that, I actually started playing singing. I would be, you know, like a kid just playing around, and I like that. And I would just start singing melodies that came into my head. But I think 
intuitively, I was trying to imitate Billie Holiday. Obviously, I couldn't do that, but <laughs> it was just the melodies and what she, what what was coming out of that record, you know. Mm-hmm. And um, so I started singing, and then shortly thereafter, not much longer, I, there was an old beat up upright piano in my house that was kind of a hand hand me down, and no one played it. My dad actually played. I saw my dad play piano a couple times, and then he would never. He was really good at boogie woogie piano, you know. Mm, mm-hmm. He would, and he would never play though. He just wouldn't play. So, I got. I saw him play one time, and I, I was pretty amazed by that. But and then I never saw him play ever again. We had this old upright, and I started banging on it, and I just really liked the noises that were coming out of the piano. Even though I couldn't play it, I just tried to figure out things. And, mm-hmm. you know, I tried to copy what I heard and stuff like that. I actually, by the time I was a teenager, I was writing songs, you know, mm-hmm. pretty... By, by the time I think I was in junior high school, I was writing my own songs. Mm-hmm. Um, but I didn't know a darn thing about music. I think it was just all intuitive stuff, you know. But I actually remember writing a song about a girlfriend I liked who dropped me <laughs> <laughs> and I was sad because I thought that was my first love and yeah. uh, I wrote a song called Candy I think and it, you know I, I it was actually pretty good for a guy who didn't know anything about music you know right so, right you know, I, I went back and listened to it and I said maybe, maybe I would just you know not think about what I know and just write you know mm-hmm. <laughs> but mm-hmm. you know anyway uh that's kind of how it all started for me. And then just after I went through life, I, grad, I gradually uh, evolved into a professional musician and, song, mm-hmm. and, uh, and writing songs and things. So, yeah, great, Bruce. Yeah. Very cool. Now, did you kind of learn from other people, just learn from kind of being around in, in the scene and stuff like that? Or did you uh, go get professional um, training? Pretty much taught myself uh, how to play piano, but I did go... And then I, I, same thing with guitar and bass guitar, I pretty much taught myself, but mm-hmm. uh, most instruments. But um, I did get some training along the way. I actually ran into this piano player, was nearby, and he was a, a teacher. And I was always in the same building he was in doing something. And he would invite me over and say, hey, Bruce, come on over here and, and sit in. And, uh, you know, I'll teach you a few tricks. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, he was a really nice guy, and he didn't charge me a penny. He just said, "Come on over." He said, "Well, what do you want to learn how to do?" And I said, "Well, I want to, I want to be a blues singer, you know, and I want to play blues, blues piano." He said, "Oh, no problem. Sit, sit down, put on these headphones, and just do what I could, and just copy me, mm-hmm. and I'll do a couple of things." So he taught me how to play with my left hand and play melodies with my right hand, and. He showed it to me in such a way that it was really pretty easy for me to pick it up, and I think that was uh, that was pretty much the. And then he and then um, he taught me all the the chord inversions, you know, mm-hmm. all the different ways to play the same chords. And he said, and he showed me how he, how you figure that out. And and he said to me, he said because you he said because you have a talent. He said to me this a long time ago. I didn't believe it, but. Mm-hmm that you have a very special talent and I don't really have to teach you a lot. I just have to show you where to go mm-hmm. and you will figure out the melodies and sing them and all that. Mm-hmm. And because most people can't do that. Mm-hmm. And I said, Oh, really? I just thought that was something people did. You know? <laughs> 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 I said, oh, I said, well, you know, yeah. and, uh, but he said, you know, I think he goes, I wish I could do what you could do. And I was really surprised. This guy was like a really good piano player, you know, mm-hmm. I'm going, well, of course, I didn't know it was a compliment at the time. I just thought he was, you know, I didn't. You know, when you're younger, you don't know any better. You just kind of think, well, you know, let's try this out. But, right, right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, it's funny. People tell you things that, through life, and they, they're actually giving you a really nice compliment, but you don't really, like, think about it. You just kind of mm-hmm. think, oh, well, okay, well, you know, you, it's funny how that happens. And then later mm-hmm. on, you go back you go back and you think about it, and you go, oh, wow, you know, that, that was... Maybe, you know, maybe I was born lucky, you know? So, <laughs> mm-hmm. so, you know, you think about it and you go, you realize what, what the person really meant. Mm-hmm. But anyway, um, he gave me some training. And then when I got into singing professionally, yeah, I started, I started to realize that 
um, I needed to protect my voice. Mm-hmm. I needed to I needed to learn how to sing properly mm-hmm. so that I didn't, you know, end up as one of those singers that, you know, sang for 10 years and then couldn't, you know, they, they sung themselves out because they didn't mm-hmm. sing properly. Mm-hmm. Right, and right. Uh, and so I, I I got together with this classical singer. He was one of the top classical singers in my area, mm-hmm. actually quite well known. David Cox Creswell was his name, and excellent singer, fantastic singer. And he lived just up the hill from me. Mm-hmm. And uh, I found him. I don't know how I found him. Probably in the newspaper or something. Or I'm not sure. And I called him one day and said, you know, I, I'd like to get some singing lessons. You know, I want to learn how to sing properly. And he brought, and I went up to, I would go once a week, I would walk up to his house and sit down there on the piano and we'd sing for 45 minutes to an hour. And he taught me all the techniques of breathing and how to sing properly and, uh, you know, how to use the voice. And, and so that little bit of technical background helped me out. Mm-hmm. And then... And then later on, I got really inquisitive. I said, well, I'm writing this music, and I'm playing it, and people seem to like it, but what the hell am I doing? <laughs> <laughs> what, is all, you know, what is all this stuff? Mm-hmm. And so, so uh, I took a couple of college courses, just, you know, and one is songwriting, just because I wanted to, you know, get a better grasp of, you know, what other songwriters did. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, and, you know, I was already in tune with who I thought was a great songwriter. Yeah. And but I wanted to understand what I was doing and what the theory was behind it. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, there's a thing called music theory, right? So yeah. I, wanted to, I wanted to understand the theory. And, you know, I science was one of my favorite um, subjects in school. So to me, theory was kind of like a scientific expedition, you know. Mm-hmm. So understanding piano and all the different chord inversions and all the... And, and just by nature, if you play piano and you're you're paying attention, mm-hmm. you will learn harmony, you will learn chord inversions, and you actually learn theory without even knowing it. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I took this course in theory, and they and they gave me a, and they gave us a test, and I like I took the test in about really fast, and I answered every question perfectly right without even knowing, you know. Mm-hmm. I understood it all, and then I thought about how come I understand this. But but the point was that when someone presented it to me in a different context, I was able to see it in a different way, mm-hmm. and I was able to understand it, you know, in a in a kind of chronological. I don't think that's the right word, but I was able to understand it in a logical progression, in, mm-hmm. in a sense, right. and understand understand what different terms meant, mm-hmm. and understand you know. What in modern music with one four five was and two five was, mm-hmm. you know, all these little uh, communication things we have because I realized I was going to have to communicate my songs to mm-hmm. other people so they could play them properly. Okay. So, you know, mm-hmm. so I, I, I had to learn the language, and the language changes depending upon the musicians and the environment mm-hmm. and, you know, even the culture you're from and, and mm-hmm. you know, who you're working with. But to understand the grasp of those theories and then the grasp of the theory of, you know, what is harmony based on and what are chord progressions based on mm-hmm. and, you know, what was Beethoven doing and, you know, all these guys. Um, it just teaches you the theory and it gives you a knowledge that, you know, it just, it, it added depth as though the technical training, a little bit of technical training here and there added depth to my abilities. And it actually helped me become a much better sitting there musician. Mm-hmm. And I believe songwriter, mm-hmm. better songwriter. But yeah. then I realized down the road, if I'm going to write really good song, just forget about everything you know and just write it from your heart and then figure it out later. Mm-hmm. You know? Right. And, uh, and, and Bruce, yeah. you, you said something uh, really profound earlier, you know, write about what you know. Uh, and, and honestly, I have read that time and time again in you know, college textbooks and in my own, you know, uh, literature findings and things like that. Um, So do you really write about what you know, or do you throw a little fiction into some of your songs? I write about what I know about, what I've lived through Mm -hmm. in in general. 
And yeah, sometimes I'll throw in a little bit of a story that I kind of made up just to, just because it made me feel better to believe that it, it could have been that way. <laughs> but, um, um, like I, I remember I wrote a song called The uh, Man in the Black Hat and I completely made up the story. Mm-hmm. And it was, lyrically it was actually really good and it told the whole story about the man in the black hat and how mm-hmm. he saved a couple of boys you know, almost drowning in a river, which mm-hmm. was a mm-hmm. song was about. And yeah. the man, then the man just left and disappeared. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. But when I thought about where that whole idea came from, I actually thought about I was writing from how I wish my father had been. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, mm-hmm. so in, in a sense, you're coming from your own feelings, even though you might be making up a story. Mm-hmm. Um, and and I do write about life experiences, and um, I try to put a message in there that. I, I don't tell people how to think about the song. I don't want people to, to know the answer. I don't want people, I don't want to tell them the answer. I don't want to give them the answer. Okay. I don't want, I just want to share, mm-hmm. you know, like, you know, if, if my idea is wake up, I'm not going to tell you how to wake up. You know, mm-hmm. I'm not going to, I'm not going to tell you my perspective on that. Mm-hmm. What I'm going to do is I'm going to write it in a way that it relates to other people in their lives, how they see it in their own life. I don't, I leave it open ended if that makes sense. Yes. So people get the, the lyrics come across. And then I work with other lyricists, write a little different way. And I enjoy writing songs with their words because it's not a way I typically approach it, you know? Mm-hmm. And I've gotten some, you know, top charting songs that way because I work with a specific lyricist over the years. Mm-hmm. And, you know, but yeah, he still has that same sort of, you know, Let's see what happens kind of attitude too so oh, okay okay uh, that's, that's probably how we how we kind of connect on the lyrical thing but other lyricists that you know they tell you exactly what they mean in the lyric you mm-hmm. know mm-hmm. and what they want to say uh, in from that perspective i just write in general the other way i write more about the feeling uh you know that kind of thing Oh, okay. Okay. So it sounds like that you're. Makes, that makes, I don't know if that makes sense. It it does. It does. It sounds like your approach is a uh, very kind of free flow, uh, more emotional, um, more emotionally driven rather than logically driven. Like here's here's the chorus. Here's the you know the the verse. Yeah. Here's the other chorus. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because I, I I look at it this way. We really don't know the answers. We just have to kind of figure them out as we go. <laughs> <laughs> we, better, we better hope that we're close to the what's going to you know we better hope we're close that we made the right decision mm-hmm. <laughs> right right excellent excellent now Bruce what what do you have coming up for uh, yourself and and for uh, you know lack of a better term Big Rain as well is there a new record coming yeah. out is there a couple singles well, coming yeah, out I, did, uh, I came out with a new album called Ocean of Souls mm-hmm that album is uh, been released now, and um, it's uh, got eleven songs on it. And and I've been writing a lot recently, mm-hmm. and I've got a backlog of other songs that I want to produce. So I'm going to come out with another album, and then I'm updating my complete song catalog, mid '80s, um, and I'm re- going to re-record some of the more popular ones and um, the ones that I really want to update the catalog with mm-hmm. and probably release another album because a lot of those songs um, still need to be heard and and there's there's a group of those songs that I want to put out mm-hmm. and that'll be an album and then with the new, new fresh material with the catalog and the new fresh material I'm writing um, just finished a new song called Gone and then finished another song Give Me Wisdom Mm-hmm. Uh, I just recorded another song called Time Will Tell in the studio mm-hmm. and that's going to be part of the new project so I may mix some of the older catalog with the new stuff and the backlog stuff and I'll probably come out with another album mm-hmm. uh, uh, within the next year and then I want to finish up on everything you know I, I, if there, there's a couple more albums I can put out Mm-hmm. Before I leave the planet, hopefully. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, Bruce, you're not that old. <laughs> I know. I'm not that old. But you know, with all this stuff going on, I'm thinking about it. 
<laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, true. I think we're all thinking about her immortality, honestly. We're all, uh, <laughs> we're all worried about all this stuff, and, you know, yeah. so on the music end, uh, I, I am not going to be bored, let's put it that mm-hmm. way, on the writing and stuff. On Good. The performance, uh, on the performance side, mm-hmm. um, I would say that, well, right now everything is stopped, so we're not doing anything. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, mm-hmm. I, I spoke with my, I connect with the guys in the band just to see how they're doing and how life is. And mm-hmm. Everybody healthy, have family and everybody. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I talked with uh, 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 Jim Dalton, the, the drummer, mm-hmm. my drummer. He goes, gosh, Bruce, I hope we ever get the band back together, man, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Have you guys thought about venturing into the world of virtual at all? Um, I know a lot oh, of yeah, artists I, are putting out I've their stuff that way. Uh, I, yeah, I've been doing that. I've been doing some solo uh, videos from the studio here. Mm-hmm. And I re- released an acoustic one, and uh, I did a piano one with the song Wisdom. Um, and then um, I'm looking at doing more streaming, virtual streaming and mm-hmm. stuff like that excellent and, yeah and actually i've been uh doing more solo work too so um i kind of see that as you know i need to i need to do more solo work as a little bit of an outlet for me as well mm-hmm. So. Mm-hmm. right right um, and now bruce yeah. do you do you have a home studio or do you go into a studio uh a quote professional studio well i have a studio here at home where i'll record um, I'll sit here and write music, mm-hmm. and I, I really spend too much time at that, probably, but I love it, so but <laughs> it's okay. But at this time in, in, in on our history, it's a good thing because it's keeping my mind occupied. And I'm not, you know, I'm trying to I'm trying to give music away to my fans so they're not with the with the hope with mm-hmm. the hope that. It will put a smile on their face during this hard time. You know, so. <laughs> right, right. And earlier you had mentioned that as well in our uh, Facebook messages, kind of back and forth. They're like, let's see if we can put a smile on people's face. Um, I, yeah, yeah. I like that so approach. I, I, so I, I said, I, I got together with my web man. He's a really good guy. His name is Max Teddy. He's also a wonderful artist, so if you musician and songwriter mm-hmm. and singer, and if you want to check him out his name is Matt Steady S-T-E-E-A-D-Y and he's he's in the, he's in the UK mm-hmm. and I, I work very closely with him uh, he he's not only a whiz musician and all that but he's a whiz on the technical stuff you know mm-hmm. and and me I'm, a, I'm, I'm okay but I'm not I'm not smart like that so I mean I guess <laughs> I could be if I studied it for the next 25 years <laughs> but um, but uh, um I kind of, I learn it all as I go. I, I figure it out, but mm-hmm. when I need something done, like we need to get something done, I match, match my man, so mm-hmm. we get it done. But, so we, we uh, set up, you know, we have, I have a store online at com for the music and everything. Mm-hmm. And uh, so we set up a, a little coupon called Hope, and I created a, what I called my message of Hope. Yeah. And we, and we created a page, and... Uh, so people can go there and they can get the, the new album free. All they have to do is when they go in, you know, when they put their order in, mm-hmm. they just type in the coupon hope and they and they get it free. They get the free download of the album. So wow. So yeah. So we're trying to do things. And Matt is doing stuff on his own too. He he contacted me. He said, Bruce, you should do this, and we'll we'll uh, I'll help you do it. And you know, I'm doing it, and the you know my fans are really appreciating it, and. You know, my, my music community is, you know, saying thank you. Mm-hmm. And I said, oh, yeah, I've been wanting to do something like that. But, you know, you, you know, I'd have to go through this learning curve. And I know you could just knock this thing right out. And he goes, don't worry, buddy. We stick together. I'll take care of it for you. So that's the kind of guy he is. Excellent. And, um, and so we got that thing up and going. Mm-hmm. And we got really positive results. And actually, you know, it, it helps me, too, because mm-hmm. it makes me feel like I'm actually contributing to to somebody's health in a way. So, okay. mm-hmm. you know, I mean, it, isn't that really what it's all about? If we're going to do this stuff, if we're going to do something in our life, we might as well do it in a way that helps people. So, right, right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, I wouldn't have a job if it wasn't for pe- people like that that wanted to hear the music. So, 
<laughs> true, true. Bruce, has that always kind of been your message, one of kind of hope and uh, outreach? Yeah, so that, that that was the message. And anyway, but it, it, it's nice because people are saying thank you and mm-hmm. getting the music. Mm-hmm. And uh, so anyway, that was a little thing we did um, in that regard. And then, of course, I digressed off of your original question, which was... <laughs> <laughs> no, that's okay. Tangents are welcome. Like I said, tangents are welcome. Uh, so, yeah, just... Just to do a quick recap, uh, so you've you got some music in the works. You're hitting your home studio pretty hard. Uh, you're also yeah, kind of yeah. reaching back into yeah. that backlog that you have. How has your music kind of changed throughout the years? I mean, you started out in the '80s, early '90s, um, and you know there's a pretty unique sound if you go back in into the '80s and '90s that they had compared to today. Has your music kind of progressed in any way? Do you still kind of keep that um, kind of blues well, foundation? That's a really good question. That is a really, really good question. I'm glad you asked that because it, it it's not an easy answer. But mm-hmm. I would say it has changed only because of the influence of a few producers along the way. Okay. Um, as a, as a, for me, a music is is a way of expressing your feelings from your heart and soul, and mm-hmm. a way to communicate with people in a way that you know you can touch them at all different levels. That you know emotionally, mentally, and all that. Mm-hmm. And and in a sense, it's kind of a health care program for you know it, that never stops giving in a sense. You know, right? Because right. it just it helps us in so many ways, but in terms of style and it, it, I guess you have to look at it from style. My style is, <laughs> it's hard to put it in a box, it's true, mm-hmm. but certain producers along the way have come along and said, you know, we're going to aim at this direction. And so they said, okay, as long as we don't destroy the essence of the, the heart of music and you know, the production is great, then I don't care. Mm-hmm. And um, so I think when I started out, at, at, my music is kind of a, it's like rock, and it's a mix of blues and maybe R&B, and, you know, even influences of soul. And, you know, everything that I heard growing up, growing up, I loved all kinds of music, so it was hard for me to say I was one thing. Mm-hmm. But I would say in general, my music has always been more on the rock side, that, but it crosses over into other areas. So mm-hmm. starting from there, I would say when, when, when we first came out with the first album, Sound of Freedom, I would say that was more of a 70s sound. Mm-hmm. And, and I would say that as we evolved and then, you know, I signed my first record deal with somebody and we produced um, an album that did very well. It crossed over into a country rock, but the country rock was sort of already in my music. Mm -hmm. We just didn't, we just didn't really play it out like that in the sense that, you know, Peter and I, I mean, he would play jazz licks in a rock song and I would play bass licks and, and, you know, Mm -hmm. we, we actually, called our we actually came up with a name for it we called it tropical funk okay (laughs) i i remember i remember yeah we called it tropical funk and actually people really thought oh that's pretty cool you know because it is kind of funky and tropical and rocky and bluesy and you know so we you know i i gave it a name and and it worked you know it worked okay but it was rock and blues and Mm -hmm. other stuff infused into it Mm -hmm. and then when we got to Oak Records, it was like, well, we're going to do this, you know, we're going to market you on, we're going to, believe it or not, you guys, country stations are going to play your music. I looked out and I laughed. <laughs> I said, you've got to be kidding me, man, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And Ray, Ray, Ray looks at me and he goes, you just watch what I do, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> I, said, I said, okay, I'll be with you every step of the way then. And, uh. You know, he produced it, and I was really pleased with what we did because it did not destroy the the essence and the heart of the music. It, mm-hmm. it, he he was a great producer. He knew how to, you know, get into the get into specific uh, various markets, and 
And it worked. And it was funny because people played the music on, co- on country radio, which was a surprise to me. Mm-hmm. And, and and we had this song, I'm Not Running, and it was like in the top 30 on country radio. And it was not a country song, believe me. But <laughs> it had a little bit of steel pedal guitar in there, and you know, it sounded cool. You know, It sounded kind of like you know, a new kind of country rock, you know. Mm-hmm. But anyway, so it, it hit the charts. And um, his, one of those guys calls me one day and goes, hey, Bruce, you know what's going on? I go, no, I'm not really paying that much attention. I'm just, you know, sitting here doing my thing. Mm-hmm. Goes, You're number 36 on the charts with I'm Not Running. I go, really? <laughs> <laughs> he goes, well, we're just surprised if you are. <laughs> That's quite all right. I, I still remember um, I was graduating college and one of my professors said, Crystal, you can't stay stagnant. You can't do just one thing. Good artists always evolve and change what they're doing. Right. And, you know, like you said earlier, when you're young, you don't necessarily understand advice or know that you're getting advice. Um, but no, fast forward uh, probably eight, nine years now. I totally understand what he means. I haven't, uh, I, I haven't stayed stagnant. I've evolved and tried out different things and all that stuff. So very cool, Bruce. That's excellent to hear. Um, now, have you always kind of gone with a producer to, uh, for lack of a better term, produce your work, or has it always well, been kind of closer to your chest? No, I, I. The last producer I had was Ray Ray Ruff, and then mm-hmm. from then on, I just. I, I, I had, I've had co-producers in the sense that someone I trust that, you know, that I feel, you know, uh, when you go to be, uh, like, I, like you asked me earlier, how, what are you doing, how are you creating your music and where are you doing it at? Yeah. Uh, I'll answer that question a little more specific for you. I, I do it right here in my studio with my piano, my hand and organ, my guitars and my bass guitar. Mm-hmm. I have a recorder and I'll record, I'll, I'll a lot of times I'll just turn on my computer and record it into my voice recorder and play the song on guitar Mm -hmm. and listen back to it and write from that and I'll chart it out, I'll make the charts. Mm -hmm. But when I do the final recording, I go in the studio who I'm working with a fellow now by the name of Stuart Wilson and he's got a studio right here in town. Mm -hmm. He built it in his house and it's a fabulous studio and the guy is super. So, and... I just met them through trying to find the right guy, you know. And the, so, so it's so that relationship for me is important because that person has to listen to everything you do in that studio. Right. There. Right. You're looking for their feedback. You're not 
I'm looking for feedback. I'm, I'm looking for, well, you know, how's that working out? And I'm not just the technical part. Well, you played the guitar part good, but this part's not too good, so play this one over or this and that and that. Mm-hmm. And you do all that. But from the big picture, you want that connection where you've got that mutual trust and understanding that if he makes a suggestion, you should try it. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. and you should just keep your ears open for all that stuff. And I'm very acute, you know, to, I'll listen back to everything we just did. I will say, well, that singer is flat on that note, so that's not right. And, but mm-hmm. I'm not taking it personal because I'm talking about me. I'm saying, you know, and, and for me, it's easy for me to just call that guy the singer, even though it's me. I don't, you know, it's just the singer. So we have to make sure the singer knows his job, you know. Okay. So, so that's how I deal with it. And. And so I, I never take anything personal in a studio, but it's really important that you have that connection. There's a thing that happens between a co-producer or the technical guy, and I'm I'm not looking for a guy who just pushes buttons. I'm looking for a guy who really knows music, and, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. and has got an acute sensibility toward it. And those people really are not that easy to find, I'll be honest. Uh, because everybody's different, right? Right. So, right. on my last album, I had uh, Stephen Bigger. He had his studio, and and he was, you know, he had the he had the history, the background, and he had the and he was really good at working with singers, and he produced a lot of you know really good people, and we connected really well on all levels, emotional and musically, and as people. So we had that connection, and we we produced what I think is a really good album because that connection is important. Mm-hmm. And I feel the same thing with Stu. Now, I, I would be back with Stephen right now, but Stephen took a hiatus and did mm-hmm. some other things in his life. So mm-hmm. I found Stuart by, almost by accident. He, it turns out he's not only a, a really good technician and a really just kind of natural music person, you know. He mm-hmm. understands, you know, where, where the artist is trying to go. Yeah. And he knows how to get the best out of the artist, but he's also very acute to the musical aspect of it. He's a, he's a fantastic violinist, right? Oh, wow. So, mm-hmm. so I ended up with not only a good technical guy, but mm-hmm. somebody I can go play music with and do shows with, you know? Yeah. So, oh, very cool, Bruce. Yeah. Very cool. So, yeah. so uh, it's it just, you know, I'm, I, I think I just got lucky, you know, sometimes you just Sometimes there's an element of luck at just getting the project off the ground with the right people, mm, you know. Mm-hmm. Right, and right. If this, there's an element, and you know what you, you're trying to find, you know, and of course there's been other times where you walked into a studio and you said, and you left saying, this ain't going to work. Mm, you know? mm-hmm. This is not going to work. This, this guy, this, but mm. you're going to, you know, but, you know, and, I know a lot of people on labels that happens to them often. They have to walk into a studio. They have to work with people they can't, they don't like, and they're not really feel they're being connected with. Mm-hmm. You know, there's all that human stuff going on. So, if there's any right or wrong, it's just that that's all part of the equation, you know. Mm-hmm. And um, so, being able to make that happen, it's it. You know, it, it really is special when you get to working with people that you're all, you know, you're connected. You're you're working off each other really well, you mm-hmm. this creative environment, you know, you're not holding back on things. You you're being as critical as yourself as anybody else would be. And at the same time, you're not being so critical that you don't that, that you're that you're destroying something that is actually good when you know when you think you can do something better. Mm-hmm. You gotta know when to leave your stuff alone, you know what I mean? So, right, right. And, and just, <laughs> and just let the heart speak, you know? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yes, very true, very true. It's, yeah, so it's it's, uh, it's 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 not a perfect science, but it mm-hmm. does work. <laughs> Excellent, excellent, Bruce. Bruce, thank you so much for taking time out of your day to talk with me and share your insight into your music, uh, your songwriting style, and all of that. Uh, You can head over to brucegwen.com and download your new album for free. Just use the coupon HOPE. Yeah, use the coupon Type in the word HOPE, H-O-P-E, all in capitals. Mm-hmm. <laughs> perfect, perfect. And now, right. uh, Bruce, where where else can people get your music? Is it up on iTunes or Amazon, Spotify? Well, then, uh, you can, uh, I'm, 
doing some rebranding. So uh, some of the older stuff is on uh, Apple Music. Okay. Mm-hmm. And then uh, I believe iTunes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then I think, but I'm not sure that the distributor is on top of everything these days. Oh no. <laughs> yeah. You, sure. you haven't taken that in house yet. I'm planning on doing what I'm planning on doing is uh, well. I'm planning on revamping, mark, uh, rebranding all the uh, streaming and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. But you, but you'll find big rain out there on the internet. No, no, you know, on mm-hmm. different platforms. All right. Perfect. Excellent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, all right, Bruce yeah, Gwen, everyone from. Uh, can I say the Big Rain now? Is that your new yeah, brand? Yeah, All right. All right. Perfect, Bruce. Perfect. Well, thank you so much for taking time of your day, and thank you for calling me from all the way from California. Well, thanks for you know getting back to me, and it's so good to hear from you. Yes. And I hope that everybody out there is staying safe, and I hope everybody in your family mm-hmm. is stays healthy and all that so yes we we will get through this yeah we will we'll get through it i'm I'm sure we'll get through it yes yes all right right. all right excellent bruce thank you so much much. have a great day you too Bye -bye. bye